Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose. This is the Tarot portion of the second half of my daily astrology vlog, which you can check out on my other channel, Astrology Today with Mel Rose. Over there, you'll find a description of the day's astrology as I have spelled it out here. Here, I'll discuss the Tarot card that sits on the side of the page, and then I'll play another card that, in the context of the day's astrology, may just give us something more to think about. So, let's get into it. The card that currently sits on the side of the page is the Seven of Swords, and it is here because it corresponds in astrology with the last 10 days or the third decan of the sun's transit here in the land of Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign. Swords and Tarot represent air element symbolism, and air element symbolism has to do with the logic and the rationale. Th thoughts, plans, and communication, what we're doing with our, our minds and our words, okay? So here we come to the Seven of Swords, and we see somebody sort of making off with some things that are not theirs. It's kind of a shady behavior. And if you think of the swords as thoughts, plans, and communications, then, you know, it might look like somebody is trying to make off with somebody else's good ideas, if somebody's were trying to use somebody's words, even perhaps against them or in spite of them. Um, or, you know, just sort of, uh, you know, taking somebody's good ideas and using them for yourself in some way. And uh, so, you know, we're looking at a point of deception here one way or the other. Uh, there's a little bit of trickery involved. Um, and they might be hoping that we will turn a blind eye <laughs> to what we see them doing. Okay. Sometimes we feel some pressure to be dishonest to get just to get what we want. And you know, Becca mentioned this in comments yesterday where she was talking about how she might have, uh, I think she said, told a porky. <laughs> she, she, told, she told a fib, uh, you know, for the sake of basically keeping a boundary in place. You know, I think maybe she didn't want to go do something. And, and so she wasn't honest with somebody about, about her reasons for doing that. And uh, fully understandable and a really common reason to to engage in deception. Um, you know, ho hopefully we can all come to a point in our lives eventually where we can just say, no, I'm sorry, I'm staying home today. <laughs> you know, no, I'm sorry, I, I have a boundary about that and I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it. You know, so that we don't feel like we have to even uh, tell a little bit of a lie so that we can just be honest and say, no, this is what I'm doing instead. But listen, the problem is the problem, you know, in any case, if we're representing ourselves in a way that is dishonest, if we're pretending, oh, these plans are mine when they were absolutely somebody else's, these ideas are mine when they were not our ideas. Um, you know, the, the problem with that is that, you know, you always run the risk of getting sort of caught in the lie, right? And so you're looking over your shoulder, you're hoping that the people who notice what you're doing don't don't say anything about it. And that, that way you're kind of really sort of at the, um, you know, at the whim, whim and the will of anybody who might know what was going on, who, of anyone who might have seen you using somebody else's thoughts, plans, or communications in a different way. Um, you know, that idea that you have to be constantly looking over your shoulder and worrying whether somebody is going to find out what you've been up to, um, really not worth it in the long run. <laughs> okay. Uh, really much more worth it. And it feels difficult, but it's really much more worth it to, to just be honest and say, Hey, can I use this great idea you have? Or, Oh, uh, you know, um, even to be honest with yourself and say, I, I thought I had a great idea, but it seems like that might have been somebody else's idea. So I'm going to go ahead and get on with my own stuff. All right. So that's the Seven of Swords. And here we have the Eight of Pentacles. Very nice. Okay. So the Eight of Pentacles. Pentacles is Earth Element Symbolism. That's about uh, the, the physical resources we possess and what it is we're willing to do with them in terms of investment, expenditure, um, giving of ourselves, work, labor, uh, to create a sense of security and support in our lives. And when we come to the Eight of Pentacles, we see a person who's really just working on something. It's it's uh, sort of a, there's, um, there's an element of this that's about, uh, what do you call that? Being mentored, right? Being a, I don't remember what the word for that is. <laughs> 
right now. Okay, but be, being mentored, basically, you know, in school, in class, learning how to do something, doing the same thing over and over again, so that so that you uh, can basically become a professional at it or become um, the best at it, so that you can, you know, you draw that picture of that pentacle enough times, and it will it will come out perfectly every time, and then you'll have. Um, you know, a product that is of value to you that you'll be able to uh, to earn support and um, and respect and uh, money as well. So where do we see the eight of pentacles on the page here today? I'm looking at my earth signs. I'm looking at Saturn. Saturn, uh, Saturn is our most earthen planet, I would say, because it has to do with all of this sort of respectability and the search for support, the the tried and tr true way of doing things, doing things the same way so that we know we can get a good outcome. And the Sun and Saturn are about to be conjunct in a couple of days here in the land of Aquarius. Uh, Saturn is, um, you know, Saturn rules Aquarius. Saturn rules both Capricorn and Aquarius. So we've been under Saturn's influence for a couple of months, but especially this month because Saturn is in Aquarius where it rules um, we've really been feeling that that drive to find the stability and support that we seek to not just um, find it, but to um, review and re and renew or replace systems, ways of being, habits, institutions that that used to work or were supposed to work a certain way, but do not work any longer. Right, so we have to find a new way to do it. Um, and that's what Saturn and Aquarius is all about, is, is finding a new way to do it. It's very um, Eight of Pentacles vibe, too, because this is something that we're just learning to do, and we do it over and over again until we find out, figure out the way that it works the best, right? And, you know, there is a tried and true way of doing things, and then as we're learning to do that thing, we find our own tried and true way of doing it. You know, we find the parts of the system that don't really work very well for us, and we, we find our way to, uh, you know renew or replace that that part of the of the system or that part of the project with our own way of doing it uh, as long as it works as long as it creates the intended outcome the product that you're looking for right and then also we have pluto in in capricorn 29 degrees capricorn guys pluto is going to move out of capricorn so soon it's going to go on into aquarius at the beginning of march so not even a whole month until that happens and uh it'll spend a couple of months there before it backs back up into capricorn for a little, for a little while but pluto's been capricorn for over 20 years so it's going to be a really refreshing change to see our transformational energies um our our transformational sort of you know pluto is not a personal planet it's more of your management team but it's bringing it it's always bringing us through these high highs and low lows that sort of inform our experience and, and cause us to uh, transform from something that we were into something that that we are becoming. And, you know, for the past 20 or so years, that's been about ha habitual ways of being. That's about been about institutions and, and um, you know, just things that we thought would be the same forever. Uh, Pluto has come through and said, no, these are not going to be the same forever. These are going to get transformed. They're going to get torn down. Anything that doesn't work is not going to work anymore. We're going to replace it with something new, or at least we're going to, we're going to get rid of the thing that isn't working. Right. So when Pluto moves on into Aquarius, it's going to be a different vibe for our transformational yearning, our transformational approach to things, because we're not just going to be noticing what doesn't work and fighting against it. We're going to be um, noticing what might work and, and, and striving to get that, get there. Right. So that's really inspiring to me. And then, like I said in the other episode today, Uranus and the North Node have been essentially conjunct since January of last year. Okay, so uh, these two are about to fall out of their conjunction. Um, they're, they're about to stop having such an intense effect on one another. And that's very helpful. You know, Uranus is still going to be in Taurus for a few years, sort of shaking up our relationship to how we get the stuff and things that we need and desire. Um, shaking up our relationship to that ability to establish security by having things the way we would like to have them. Um, and it's not a very comfortable fit, Uranus and Taurus, but here we are and we're about halfway through it. So uh, it'll be a few more years. North Node, on the other hand, is moving in this direction all the time and it will be moving on into Aries later this year. 
So they're, they're separating. This is, North Node is like our trajectory. It is, it is the true direction we are all working in at this time. It's the, it's the uh, primary focus. And so when the North Node is in Capricorn, in Taurus, my mistake, uh, the North Node is saying, um, yes, our, our trajectory, our primary concern at this time, dudes, is to, um, is to secure, you know, the resources that we need, right? With Uranus sitting right there going, uh, -huh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> right. So nice of the, nice for these two to be starting to part ways and, and, you know, maybe not having to have so much of our attention on this variable, uh, um, access to resources. You know, maybe we can uh, focus a little bit more on our own security without, without having to be, um, you know, as, powerfully affected all the time by the variable um, existence or availability of resources. And then, um, you know, the North Node is going to move into Aries. And so our our trajectory is going to change to something way more assertive and outgoing and and conquest, get, conquest driven. That will be interesting to see how that pans out. So um, that's the news in Earth signs right now. But I would really bring this back to the sun's um, ultimate conjunction with Saturn here happening in a couple of days saying that our work is very much on our mind and um, you know putting in systems putting systems in place that work uh, replacing systems that don't work anymore um, being in review and assessment of each part of a system that you take part in so that you can uh, you can renew and improve the parts that don't that aren't really doing what they're supposed to do and let's put that together with the seven of swords here okay so you know there are there are different ways of dealing with other people's ideas <laughs> okay uh 20 years ago i went to school to learn massage therapy so i can't say that anything i did in in massage in 20 years of massage was entirely original to me okay i learned the skills that i learned from other massage therapists i learned the ethics that I learned from other massage therapists. I learned an existing way of doing things. I adapted it to my own way of doing things. And so I came out with a really good product, uh, you know, a product that was a service and that was the massages that I gave. And, um, you know, that's, that's what uh, mentorship is. That's what uh, apprenticeship is. That's the word for it, uh, is, you know, really studying what, what the people who have come before us have done and um, allowing ourselves to uh, to um, sort of take that on and grow into it, uh, you know, in a way where somebody willingly gave us that information, you know, probably because we paid for it and we showed up for the for the class, right? Um, whereas in this case, this is somebody who just thinks they can make off with somebody else's good ideas. Uh, this is the person who who's out there thinking, oh, I don't need to uh, go to school to study massage therapy or whatever it is that you might might decide that you need to study uh, I don't need I know I don't need to learn from anybody else I can just figure this out for myself and um, do just as well as this other person you're not going to do it just as well as this, as this other person because you didn't get the full information okay you didn't get the full download you didn't show up for the classes so you might have gotten you know, you might learn some skills, but you might not know the ethics side of it, or you might know the ethics side of it, but your skills are wanting because you didn't get, you didn't actually learn from a pro, all right? So um, the massage therapy just being sort of a, a an example here, but, um, you know, definitely when we want, um, when we want something to have value for us, uh, it's, it's better to be engaged in some sort of um, a program or at least an agreement with somebody who already does the thing that you want to do so that they can give you some training and you can understand how best how best it is done okay and then when you get to the point where you have learned from the person who knows how it's done who does it well then you can start to sort of review and replace the parts that don't work for you make it work better for you in different ways okay but um, you certainly can't just uh, ha you know have this idea that you're going to go uh, do something that somebody does, you, you know, like you can't just show up at the courthouse and say, I'm a lawyer, <laughs> right? <laughs> if you did that, you would, you would look pretty foolish and everybody would be able to tell, right? And you'd be hoping that people would turn a blind eye to the things that you're ignorant about. But 
it wouldn't happen because you'd be surrounded by lawyers, right? They're going to point out what, <laughs> what you don't know very quickly. So I think that's the message that's coming across here is, you know, don't try to purloin other people's ideas. Don't try to purloin other people's, um, you know, uh, sort of professional ways of being or even just their personal ways of being. If you see that somebody has a system that works for them, ask them about it okay if you see if you see that somebody is doing a thing that you think would work really well for you ask them about it and be willing to go get the learning be willing to go uh, take on the education so that you can do it well okay so that you know which parts that you can that you're good at and the, which parts you need work on and you can give those those parts that need work your attention right um, rather than just making off with it and saying, oh, I think I have a really good idea here. I'm just going to start doing this other person's job and I think I can probably do as well. You won't do as well and people will know the difference. And, um, and, <laughs> and, and then, you know, you're kind of back at square one. All right. I think that's all I have to say about it today, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate your presence here. My name is Mel Rose and I'll see you all back here tomorrow for more astrology today and tarot and one more thing i'm just going to give that warning again about uh protecting your intellectual property don't let somebody make it off, make off with it okay all right